Guys, Headphones Neo here, back with a very special bonus episode of the show. So, as you may have noticed, there was no episode on the podcast feed for week ending June 17th. Um, I was on vacation, but now that I'm back, I thought I would do a special episode review for Kenobi Part 5 as we head into the season finale for the show, get some of my thoughts and impressions and some of that stuff out of the way so that when I get into my review for Part 6, it is a pure review for the um, the season finale and the show as a whole, how it ties things together, how it all works out. So for this review, I am going to start it off by saying that overall, the episode was very well done. I like the juxtaposing between Anakin and his thoughts with Obi-Wan, with present day and attacking Obi-Wan now. I like um, the thought process of Obi-Wan and knowing Vader's fighting style, what he's ex- what they can expect and how they can properly set up their strategy in order to um, survive escaping from the Empire. So we do get a um, introduction of Anakin as a Padawan again, much like we saw in Episode 2. Um, the only issue I saw here was it didn't feel like they really did much de-aging of Anakin or Hayden Christensen as Anakin. So it felt like current 2022-looking Hayden Christensen as Anakin Skywalker from... Attack of the Clones from 2002 or whatever. So it's kind of weird to see him like older Anakin playing younger Anakin as a Padawan. So other than that, though, I liked that back and forth that we know we get more information of Anakin's fighting style, that he's very aggressive, is very singularly focused um, along the lines of Dooku. So when he is fighting and he does have that focus, that he doesn't stop until the mission is com- accomplished. But Obi-Wan knowing that and knowing that Anakin's is not going to see any other way of getting out of the situation is going to use that to their advantage to escape. So Obi-Wan uses that to um, basically gets an audience with the third sister, um, figures out that she was a youngling at the temple. That's how she knows that Vader is Anakin and um, find out finds out that she's hunting Anakin for taking away her family. So this ensures that Obi-Wan and the rebels are able to escape. Um, so I like that um, back and forth going on. Um, Anakin or Vader gets to the transport ship, uses this ultimate force power, kind of like we see in the Force Unleashed, to stop the transport, which turns out to be a deception on the part of Kenobi to be in another transport to escape, which is... A very clever move. Um, Vader uses the Force also to tear apart the doors. During this time, the third sister, aka Riva, shows up, um, trying to be subtle behind Vader, but he already senses her presence, stops the saber from attacking him. They get into a very nice move and or dance move where Vader is essentially sidestepping and evading the third sister and her lightsaber combat. I still don't know what um, purpose spinning the lightsaber does as a distraction because of all the previous stuff that just happened that it's not going to distract Vader, but um, he uses the force to take the saber out of his hand, uh, out of her hand, break it in two, even throws one at her feet to um, use it as a uh, means of taunting her to fight. They go at it again. He still defeats her and stabs her in the stomach to um, essentially take her life and lets her know that she is of no further use to them. Um, of course, we are all hoping since Reva was on her knees at this point prior to the lightsaber stab that Vader was going to pull the same move that he pulled with Dooku and the two sabers and cutting off his head. Um, I'm guessing that because they wanted to keep it a little bit more family friendly than that. So they only did the stabbing in the stomach and use it as an introduction for the Grand Inquisitor to show up and let her know that rage is a very important key and that she is not going to get anywhere and that he is superior to her um the return of the grand inquisitor was okay i kind of want to now know what information he has to um be closer to vader as far as saving his life or what happened in that time frame between the last episode or his death from uh reva to now but 
um, since he was stabbed in the stomach and so was she, I figure the third sister is still alive. Somehow this is going to be, this is going to play into the next episode where she makes it to Tatooine to try and find Luke or Owen or ta- like torture Owen to get to Luke. And Obi-Wan is going to somehow, for whatever reason, stand in to at least get kind of on Owen's good side or at least make it so that Owen doesn't hate him as much. Um, it doesn't sound like Owen is going to want to tr- still let um, Ben or Obi-Wan train Luke, but at least they're not going to hate each other or Owen's going to not hate Obi-Wan as much. So um, I figure tie that all together, get Leia back to Alderaan and all of that, or at least as far as Obi-Wan's intention with Luke, Owen's going to trust that Obi-Wan is going to keep his distance and truly only wants to protect Luke. So he's going to take on that whole uh, persona of a crazy old hermit stay out in the Jenland waste and um, only look over Luke to make sure nothing crazy goes happens to him or anything like that. Maybe get a whole thing 10 years later or whatever to um, have Luke piloting a speeder going through Beggar's Canyon and Obi-Wan saving his life um, at that point and that's kind of and leave it at that to kind of have that set up um, so that we can tie out the whole reason why um, Obi-Wan or how Obi-Wan knows that Luke has already become a great um, pilot Um, because we already and that's mostly just to balance out the whole um, past five episodes with Leia and why Leia trusts Obi-Wan to come out of hiding, why they have that special connection, why Bale trusts Leia to deliver that information to Obi-Wan is because of all these past episodes that they have that relationship. Obi-Wan trusts Leia. They've built up this relationship at a young age. So, and Leia knows that Obi-Wan is a Jedi. They, they are protectors of peace and justice and all of that. So, all in all, good stuff. So that's really all there is for that. I mean, I liked that we learned about Riva's backstory, that she was at the um, temple when Anakin as Vader came and killed her family. I liked the whole juxtaposition of um, Obi-Wan teaching Anakin about his fighting style and that there are ways around his brute force attack. Um, and so that's how, so even though Vader and Anakin have that same style. They're gonna, that he's gonna have that singular focus for going after Obi-Wan. That Obi-Wan is looking at the bigger picture, taking that step back and, um, using that to his advantage to f- find the flaw in, um, Anakin's attack style and find a way around it to protect people and save life because ultimately that is what their goal is. That is what their purpose is. So, um, take it from there to, um, apply it to the life as a whole. Um, the final sequence does feel like it's mimicking, um, the end of, or the end of, I want to say the last Jedi where the rebellion is reborn. Um, they have no hyperdrive. Um, they have the empire close on their tails. So not sure what's going to happen. Maybe Bale's going to come and rescue them or they're gonna, basically the last episode has to settle quite a few things. But I have a feeling it's going to transition from getting Leia back to Alderaan um, into Obi-Wan starting his Force Ghost training now that he has his connection to the Force again. Um, getting um, back to Tatooine and Luke to find out what's going on there. Um, some, maybe a potential scene with Reva to kind of mimic what we saw in Star Wars Rebels and with um, Darth Maul and that whole sequence. So... Um, maybe that's going to be the impetus for, um, Qui-Gon to finally show up as a force ghost to Obi-Wan and begin the training, have the rest of, of the episode as that. Maybe Owen suddenly shows up, see the, see Obi-Wan talking to himself, and that's how he gets the whole thing of being a crazy old hermit. So something along those lines and, um, maybe various other things just because we from what i've seen online it potentially is going to be a much longer episode like feature length um as far as the season finale goes so we'll see how all that happens but overall obi-wan continues to be a good show i've enjoyed all of it um granted they're doing a little bit of retconning you could say but for me it just feels like they're expanding on that universe or the universe and that time frame um mostly so far with luke and or with leia and obi-wan um but i can't wait to see how they tie out some of the additional information with 
uh, Luke and Obi-Wan from A New Hope. Um, otherwise, the only thing that really stood out is other connections. So I think I mentioned Vader's uh, Force powers being along the lines of uh, mimicking what we saw in the video game The Force Unleashed. Um, but when we have that mon or the training um, look back from uh, Anakin's Padawan years, his fighting style was very similar, it felt like, to when or mesh kind of like a precursor to what we saw his fighting style as when he was taking out the sand people on Tatooine from um, Attack of the Clones. And then the ending of it, when he's pounding his lightsaber down on um, Obi-Wan's lightsaber, felt a lot like a Luke um, or the Luke and Vader fight sequence from Re uh, Return of the Jedi um, when Luke is about to go full dark side. So I thought a lot of, there were a lot of subtle callbacks like that in this episode, which were definitely very nice. So that's all there is for this particular episode and review. So, uh, look forward to, or look out for the, um, episode later this week, um, which will include the updates for the vacation, the review for Ken the Kenobi season finale and all of that good stuff. Um, this review will also be on the pa on the uh, podcast feed, so you guys can check it out there if you want an offline version. Um, and if you're a Patreon at patreon.com slash PatelN01, you'll also get a bit of bonus content as far as the outline for this week's episode as well. Um, so all of the links and stuff like that can be found on the website at headphonesneal.reviews. The Twitter account is at PatelN01, where you can get all updates. Um and what I'm up to, interact with me, comment on this review, and all of that good stuff. So look out for that later today as well. But thanks for tuning into this particular review, and until next time.